when Gautama, the Buddha was asked, is it better to walk alone or in company? He said, it's better to walk alone than to walk with a fool. He's not saying don't walk with anybody, he's not saying don't have companions, but he said it's better to walk alone than walk with a fool because they can drain you, they can take such a lot of energy and time and you don't know, they may be stronger than you and they may take you their way than you taking them your way. <laughs> I'm at my best when I'm alone. Uh, because I don't mess with myself. If one knows, if one enjoys being alone, it means they are definitely better organized psychologically, emotionally, far better organized than others. There is no limit as to how a human being can become. So before we associate ourselves with people, it'll be good every day in the morning or a certain period of your life, if one withdraws to spend a little time with oneself and see how, in what ways can this be little better than the way it was yesterday. A certain period of time, you do one thing, just twenty-four hours, take a break from everything, not today, right now you're among people. You take a break sometime, just twenty-four hours and don't read, don't watch television, don't use a phone. Simply sit in your room, alert, not sleeping. And if you watch the nature of your mind, you yourself will certify this is a madman. So before we associate ourselves with people, it'll be good every day in the morning or a certain period of your life, if one withdraws to spend a little time with oneself and see how, in what ways can this be little better than the way it was yesterday. If you want, consciously you can evolve. In this evening you can evolve if you're willing. It doesn't take a million years because our evolution is not biological anymore. Our evolution is conscious, there is no limit as to how a human being can become. This is something that every human being must do. If you know how to be by yourself, then coming together will be hugely rewarding. They say man is a social animal, he likes to live among people. It gives him a sense of harmony, security and connection. But. It must be interesting for you to know that human is one of the few species who can live alone. But how do we make this alone time powerful? Well, check this out. Certain lore in this country says, when you want to do a short and quick journey, walk alone. When you want to do a long journey, walk in company. But the important thing is, who is walking with you? Not always being together is a good thing. Many times, being together can be a nuisance. <laughs> when Gautama, the Buddha was asked, is it better to walk alone? or in company, he said, it's better to walk alone than to walk with a fool. Well, that's him, not me. He was quite sure that only a fool will walk with you. <laughs> so he said, it's better to walk alone than to walk with a fool. So, <clears throat> first and foremost, unless you are a twin, even then, 
we come along and we go along. If one does not know how to be by himself or herself, then being together can be a lot of nuisance. We are referred to as human beings. Our action is conscious and judicious. But generally, when people get together, generally, people are in compulsive action. It can be an association where there could be a purposeful action, or it can be a gang where there can be more purposeful action, or it can be a crowd which can be a compulsive action. Human beings means every other creature is what it is simply because of what it does. But a human being can simply be, which is a unique quality of the human being, that we can simply be, that we are not compulsive action, that's what it means. So essentially, to be human means we have reached that point of evolution within ourselves, that if we wish, we can simply sit here, just be. We can consider as to what action to take and what not to take. This is definitely individual. When individuals come together, we say, it's we in… in plural, but still it is individuals who have to come together. I'm just asking you a simple question. Within this, how many people? Hello? How many people within you? One, two, only one. If you're one, you're normal human being. If you're more than one, you're either schizophrenic, or you're possessed. You either need a, need a psychiatrist or an exorcist. But you will see whenever things don't go right, another guy will pop up from somewhere. <laughs> so, becoming an individual means you killed all those pop-ups and just said, this is me. This what is me has many dimensions. If I don't see this is an individual, I cannot divide this further, then transformation will not happen. If transformation does not happen, if people come together in that state, there will be more mess than solutions. When things are going right, when good things are being done, if you ask people, they say, yes, I did it. When things don't go right, when things go wrong, then they will try to find somebody. If they don't find anybody, he is always there <laughs> When they are very wonderful, of course they take pride in being how wonderful they are. When they turn nasty, they say, it was my ego. Mr. Ego is always a fall guy. So individual means, but if I'm wonderful, it's me. If I'm nasty, it's me. To be an individual means you are not further divisible. That means you're just one. People find different ways to divide themselves within themselves. In India, with eighteen thousand years of cultural history, we have invented various words to divide ourselves. It's very common for people to talk in terms of Atma, Paramatma, Ankara, this one and that one. But every… every culture has this in their own way. All of you, are you twenty-four hours wonderful? Hello? Are you twenty-four hours wonderful? No, no, sometimes wonderful, sometimes nasty, sometimes beautiful, sometimes ugly. It's okay. 
If we understand it is me who is capable of being absolutely wonderful and it is me who is capable of being absolutely nasty on another moment, then gradually the number of moments of nastiness will keep on receding. If I see what is wonderful is me, what is nasty is… In India we have many words, it's my karma, what can I do? <clears throat> now, you must fix this. Being an individual is very important, that means you're not further divisible. If I'm wonderful, it's me, if I'm nasty, it's me. If I succeed, it's me, if I fail, it's me. You have to fix this. All creatures hang out together, whether it is various wild creatures, most of them hang out together. Even monkeys who are just one step behind us, they are also in bunches. It is only human being who can sit alone and transform himself or herself because this is the prerogative of being human that we can simply be. This is why you are called human being, you are capable of being. You are not in a compulsive state of activity. If you want, consciously you can evolve. In this evening you can evolve if you are willing. It doesn't take a million years because our evolution is not biological anymore, our evolution is conscious. For every other creature, it is fixed. So before we associate ourselves with people, it'll be good every day in the morning or a certain period of your life, if one withdraws to spend a little time with oneself and see how, in what ways, can this be little better than the way it was yesterday, this life? How it can be a little better life than what it was yesterday? Because most people are coming together for their needs. To fulfill needs, people come together. Some people come together to fulfill a purpose or a cause. Some people come together to eat, drink, and be together because they cannot be alone. In compulsive state of psychological activity is on. When you are like this, you cannot be. That means you cannot be a human being. Being has to happen. Only then togetherness will be very rich. If you know how to be by yourself, then coming together will be hugely rewarding and of tremendous value. That means we came together consciously. Nature has fixed two lines within which every other creature lives and goes. But once you have come as a human being, there is only bottom line, there is no top line. There is no limit as to how a human being can become. This is something that every human being must do. A certain period of time, you do one thing, just twenty-four hours, take a break from everything, not today, right now you're among people. You take a break sometime, just twenty-four hours and don't read, don't watch television, don't use a phone. Simply sit in your room, alert, not sleeping. And if you watch the nature of your mind, you yourself will certify this is a madman. Because for most people their mind cannot stay on any one thing. Unless they're in activity, simply they cannot be here. During another discussion, Sadhguru shares how you can be your best company. Have a look. If I leave you alone in a room, all by yourself, if you are capable of being miserable, this means you're in bad company, isn't it? Hello? <laughs> If I am with you and you suffered, maybe it's me. But you are sitting alone and suffering, this means you are in bad company, isn't it? You have to fix that one thing, that this one is never bad company. It's the best company you have. 
at another venue while having a conversation with Matthew Hayden, the former Australian cricketer. Sadhguru tells his story about the times when he lived alone. How did he handle that? Let's hear it from Sadhguru himself. Uh, personally, I've spent a lot of time by myself in the jungles of southern India, in the Himalayas. Now every year I spend time in Tibet. These days it's very difficult for me to be alone with <laughs> people all the time. And do you like that? Is that something that you, you now seek, that, that time alone? Or I'm at my best when I'm alone. Oh. <laughs> and why is that? Why do you think that is? Uh, because I don't mess with myself. People sit by themselves and mess with themselves and make a mess out of themselves. Mm. If they stay alone, they'll go crazy, a whole lot of people. If one knows, if one enjoys being alone, it means they are definitely better organized psychologically, emotionally. Initially it looks like a struggle, but once you really taste what it is, you can't be without it. Mm. You just can't be without it. So it's like this. If I shut myself up once in a way from everything around me, because otherwise I'm seven days of the week, 365 days, 20, 22 hours a day, I'm on, on, on. <laughs> so, uh, if I shut myself, I don't read anything, I don't watch television, I don't use the phone, I don't even look out of the window. Because there is a phenomena of life within you which is far bigger than all the entertainment you have. One of the… one of the important processes of uh, spiritual sadhana we give, the tools that we offer, is always to go into silence. People go into silence. For… Uh, from three days to three years, four years like this, people go on silence, not saying a word to anybody. Well, in today's world where if they're having breakfast, they must take a picture of the breakfast, I'm having breakfast, if I'm going to the toilet, I'm going to the toilet. And when this is the world, <laughs> to just shut up and sit in one place takes a lot. Because most people are only living with their psychological drama of their own thought and emotion, they get bored, they want to do something else, they want interaction. Most of the time you're just a bundle of thoughts, emotions, ideas, opinions, ideologies, prejudices, something, something other than life. If you… if I just sit there, for five days I don't have a single thought in my mind, I simply sit. They're the best times. People… people around me think I'm superhuman. No, this is not about being superhuman. This is about realizing being human is super. It is not for nothing, it is not for nothing that we are the peak of evolution on this planet. This is not clock ticking away, it's our life ticking away, isn't it? Most people think other people die <laughs> you know? No, no, you and me will die. If you understand, if you understand that this is a limited amount of time and energy, you would see how to master this in some way. Do whatever you want, you can't stop one minute from rolling, isn't it, just to you. If every moment of your life, if you're doing what really, really matters to you, you will live a wonderful life. In another talk, Sadhguru discusses another aspect of being alone. He says that you are all alone in this world, but are you alone materially or spiritually or both? Let's hear what Sadhguru says. So when it comes to the spirit, anyway, you walk alone. So don't mix that up. So that part of it you handle well, the material part of it according to your capability, to what extent you can do it, you do it. They all happen to the extent you're capable of handling them, that's all. So, 
you make sure the spiritual part of your life, you handle it one hundred percent properly. All I am saying is, it doesn't matter how you walk, as far as your spiritual process is concerned, anyway you're alone. Nobody is with you. It's only the bodily process, the material process of life, which you can share with people. You come alone and you go alone, isn't it? Even if you have a twin brother or a twin sister, you still come alone and go alone, isn't it so? But he said it's better to walk alone than walk with a fool, because they can drain you, they can take such a lot of energy and time and you don't know, they may be stronger than you and they may take you their way than you taking them your way. <laughs> There's every possibility, yes? Concluding this video, these are some of the valuable pieces of advice from Sadhguru. In the discussion, he told us how powerful being alone can be and how you can make the most out of it. For more videos, click the video shown on the screen right now and we'll see you there.